So if you're not permanently online scrolling through Twitter like sometimes I tend to be, you might have missed this absolutely wacky drama around the Canadian real estate market and a group of individuals who bought pre-construction homes near the peak of the market and are now calling for a bailout because of the way that the market has gone. We are suffering and financially devastated with the inflation rate, uh, rate so high, the interest rate so high, it is very hard for us to put food on table and then get these properties closed. But things get even crazier and this is going to blow your mind because uh, the main person who's organizing these protests is someone who bought these homes. He actually bought two of them at a price of $2.4 million each. And the same guy is standing in pictures sort of flexing multiple Tesla cars that he owns. Uh, it, it, gets, it gets really wild here. So let me walk you through the story. And this is the article from the Toronto Star that started it all, the headline being, they paid top dollar for pre-construction homes at the market peak. Now their builder is selling the same models for far less. But this headline really understands how like, batshit crazy this story gets. And the main character in this story is the person who went to the media to make this a story, Ajit Saroha, this guy right here. After this guy bought two pre-construction homes for $2.46 million each with $800,000 in deposits, um, now he's saying that they're facing financial devastation because their bank appraisals are coming up far shorter of the amount they agreed last year to pay for their homes, leaving a huge gap in financing um, they will get when it comes time to close on their homes later this year. So essentially this guy is pissed off because he bought a home for $2.4 million and now the builder of those homes who hadn't finished selling all of the homes that they were building are now selling those same homes for hundreds of thousands of dollars less. Um, some people saying that their $2.4 million homes are now being sold by the builder for around $1.9 million. They're crying that this isn't fair because when it comes time for them to get a mortgage, when you get a mortgage, you need to get an appraisal of your property and appraisers look at the value of the homes around you to determine what the value of your home is. And these people are obligated to pay 2.3, 2.4 million dollars per home here, but their homes are only being appraised at a value of 1.8 to 1.9, meaning they can't get a mortgage to cover those hundreds of thousands of dollars of difference. These complaints are what led to the protest that was held outside of the builder's headquarters, Madame Home's uh, building headquarters, just this weekend. And we're gonna play the clip from this uh, protest, his speech from this, this main guy. Uh, and you can sort of see the, uh, the, the subtitles uh, right around here on your screen, um, right around here, because the audio isn't extremely clear. So we are testing today, all of us, we are the families who are suffering uh, from the situation, current scenario is so bad that uh, the interest rates have been hiked to higher proportions. We cannot get mortgages. And the worst part is that our partner in the contract, factory builders, they have undercut their prices. They have undercut their prices by several hundred thousand. So in some cases, $400,000. And uh, all of the buyers, they are having a hard time getting mortgage and appraisals to that value. Uh, this is the reason we are together. This is the first protest of its kind. We'll have these protests every Saturday, same time, 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. every Saturday until our voices are heard and responded to. So all of us, we this is the first meeting. I compliment and congratulate you that you are together. And this will keep getting bigger every week. Uh, we are getting emails and uh, we are getting support from other uh, buyers also who will join us next Saturday and the coming Saturdays. So guys, thank you so much for being here. And all of us, we should uh, hold our hands together. We are fighting a real big thing. Uh, this is an unequal battle that we have to fight. And uh, except uh, unless we get support from wider community, it will be hard for us. So please uh, tell all your friends, families to join this noble cause. We are suffering and financially devastated with the inflation rate, uh, rate so high, the interest rate so high, it is very hard for us to put food on table and then get these properties closed next uh, across the street. They were already very expensive and now with the current scenario in the last few months, what Bank of Canada has done, it has become almost impossible.
Thank you so much. So he talks about how everyone is financially devastated and financially ruined from this situation. And in some situations, I imagine there are people who bought pre-construction homes at the top of the market and now are struggling to get financing, to get mortgages, to actually close on these homes. A lot of people will say, buyer beware, um, those were just speculators. But there is a certain percentage of people here where families, maybe first time home buyers who felt that the market was running away from them, saw an opportunity to buy a house and thought it was going to be their last chance and then now are in a really shitty financial situation. But what is absolutely bonkers is that that is not the case for this guy who's putting together these protests. Uh, far from it, you might remember that I already told you that he was buying two of these pre-construction homes already for $2.4 million each and has already paid $800,000 just in cash to put a deposit down on these homes. But on top of the $800,000 down payment he put on these homes just in, in cash, this wasn't financed by a mortgage or anything like that, just cash he had, there's all kinds of pictures on the internet that have been surfaced after he sort of went to the media to make this a story of this guy, and here's one of him in front of his Tesla, with a, a rather obnoxious quote saying, a great drive and a great car to Niagara, you need affluent friends to enjoy life, which is a sentiment I entirely disagree with. Your friends, it doesn't matter what their net worth is, um, it matters how they care for you you and, and like the relationship you have with them. So just like a, a demonstration of this guy's character. Another picture of him flexing in front of a different car advertising his uh, law office um, with his law office license plate there um, in front of what looks to be a, a BMW this time. And then the picture they originally chose to use with this article, which they recently sort of changed out for the other picture I showed you at the very beginning, is him standing in front of this, which seems to be a different house, not the pre-construction ones, in front of a different Tesla, what I think is another Tesla back here and then a lot of people missed this one is that underneath this sheet over here is what looks to be a uh, sports car. This is the guy who's claiming that he and other people are financially devastated by this situation where their house isn't worth as much as they paid for it just a year ago. And this really pisses me off. And oftentimes on this channel, I try to stay neutral and don't get this frank, but it seems like this guy is really trying to take advantage of many people who may legitimately be in a negative situation um, through um, not much fault of their own, uh, who are actually struggling because they need to make a payment on their, uh, their mortgage that it has gone up dramatically. Um, this guy is taking advantage of the situation and it seems like he's taking advantage of it for ulterior motives um, at least I, I, I believe this to be the case again just a uh, hypothesis from here uh, from me is that he's taking advantage of this situation for his own personal benefit let me explain Here's his bio page from his law office's website, um, and it seems like he sort of does all different types of laws, not really specializing in one in particular, but if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we get to real estate where he says, we do clean and thorough job throughout the real estate transaction, whether it is commonplace, residential, or a more complicated commercial transaction, uh, take up all kinds of civil and business litigation, and see that they reach their desired goal. Immigration, we only take up complex immigration matters for appeal work and detention review. Um, so apart from the sort of uh, uh, oddly worded real estate section here, this provides a little bit of insight as to why he might be making such a big stink about the situation that he's in with the two homes that he purchased at a price of $2.4 million each. As a lawyer, what are you trying to get to make more money? think about that. What are you trying to get to make more money? Of course, it's getting more clients, getting more people that will pay you for your legal work. Now think about the amount of people that may be in a negative situation as a result of house prices declining and mortgage rates going up, um, who all have frustration. Okay, keep that in mind. Now, what if you are the real estate lawyer that's seen as the one that's fighting for the people that are in this situation by holding protests and protesting against the builder? Well, perhaps that with the media coverage that you see sought out by going to the Toronto Star, perhaps those people who are so disenfranchised will come to you to be their real estate lawyer because they see you as the figurehead of a movement that they feel frustrated about. Again, I'm just speculating on the situation. I'm not making any direct allegations here, but this seems like somebody who's not under direct financial distress and not someone who would be intrinsically motivated just to go out and start a protest that he's going to every single week if there wasn't something in it for him in the long run.
Taking this individual guy out of the situation though, I do see the reason that some people are frustrated about this sort of thing. They got sold a product at a higher price and the way that they're able to afford that product is by getting a mortgage to purchase it. Um, but the very thing that affects whether or not they're able to get a mortgage uh, for that property is being negatively impacted by the person who sold them the original property in the first place because the home builder is undercutting their prices and as a result, they're not able to get a mortgage. So it does seem like there's a little bit of a lack of power on the buyer's side here here in terms of uh, being able to affect the situation uh, while the seller is actually able to affect the situation by lowering home prices. But ultimately, as a buyer of real estate, you sign your agreement of purchase and sale at that purchase price with those terms included in that agreement. And if the market doesn't go in the direction of your favor between when you sign the agreement and when you close on the property, well, yeah, that's just uh, the risk that you have to take if you're signing one of these longer term agreements where you're not specifically going to be getting the house very quickly after after you purchase the place like you would with a resale property, usually 45 days to 60, 75 days. And ultimately, I'm sure you and many people could see something like this coming. In Canada, we've created this culture of real estate speculators um, who aren't necessarily purchasing properties for themselves, but purchasing investment properties that don't cash flow, don't have any uh, real estate investing fundamentals, but they're just speculating on the appreciation of the real estate property because they think homes can only go up in Canada. And this culture isn't just in the individuals, it's perpetrated or perpetuated by also by uh, federal, provincial, and in this case, municipal governments. Here's a, um, a story from the Toronto Star. The headline is, if you really wanted to help Toronto, you'd buy a new home. Here's why. In the city of Toronto's new budget, they said that they're expecting to make $947.7 million in revenue from the municipal land tra transfer tax. This is a tax that everyone who lives inside of the uh, sort of amalgamated Toronto has to pay when they sell a property, the, the land transfer tax. Uh, and this is around 2% on average. So with this $947.7 million in revenue they're expecting to get from the land transfer tax, they were projecting that this year in Toronto, there would be $47.3 billion worth of real estate transactions, um, making the $947 million 2% of that. They're speculating that 2023's real estate property uh, sales and the volume of sales will be one of the highest land transfer revenues since the tax was implemented in 2009, only behind the, the crazy bear, uh, bull market of uh, $1.18 billion in revenue from this tax during 2021. This is what I'm talking about with the culture of speculation on real estate and our addiction to needing real estate to prop up other areas of the economy in Canada because the city of Toronto is saying, hey, we need real estate transactions to keep Keep going here. We need the volume to pick up and if we're going to pay for all the things we need to pay for in our budget, but that is not what's happening so far in January of 2023 um, because home sales, the volume, like the amount of homes sold in the month of January is down 50% from January last year, meaning, hey, they're not going to make their 940 something million dollars on their land transfer tax. They were just speculating just like uh, the, the people from the previous story uh, who are, are sort of speculating on the value of their homes and not planning for a situation where house prices go down, or in this case, sales volumes go down. This points to a way broader issue that is the over-financialization of Canadian housing, right? Uh, instead of these being places for people to live uh, and, uh, and and potentially uh, earn a little bit of money on sort of tracking inflation when they sell it 20 years down the line, instead, this has become a speculative asset that investors put their money into to try to make a quick buck. That is a big problem that's not going to be solved quickly, but in the in terms of this protest we talked about and, and the clown organizing them, uh, to, to be frank, again, I'm being a little bit more forward with my opinion about this matter than I usually do. Let me know if you, you like hearing my take every once in a while. Uh, I, think, I think that situation is an absolute joke, but the broader issue is something that's going to take a long time if we want to sort of turn the other way on it. I don't know, maybe I'm overreacting. Let me know down in the comments what you think about it. I read every single one and I try to get back to a bunch of them. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so if you want more Canadian updates just like this one. I hope this video helped you out at least a little bit and I'll see you next time.